Adams, legal director. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this event called Civil Union to Marriage, Fighting for Equality in New England and Beyond. Tonight's discussion is sponsored by GLAAD, by the History Project, and by the Queer Caucus of the Northeastern University Law School. Uh, the History Project has a table outside, which I understand they will be there if you have questions, information after the program is over. I want to say a few quick words of introduction about our participants tonight. I had here about our three participants tonight, but more about that in a minute. Um, first, Beth Robinson. Beth is a Vermont attorney, partner in the firm of Langrock, Sperry, and Wool. She's a graduate of Dartmouth College and of the University of Chicago Law School. But we know her more fondly at GLAD as the woman who for 15 years led the effort to achieve marriage equality in the state of Vermont, and who brought that campaign over the finish line on April 7th of this year with the Vermont House of Representatives overriding vote of the governor's veto in a dramatic 100 to 49 vote where 100 votes were necessary for the override. The second participant in our discussion is Mary Bonato, GLAD's Civil Rights Project Director. Mary has been an attorney at GLAD since early 1990, so she's coming near to her 20th anniversary. Mary is a graduate of Hamilton College and of this very law school, Northeastern. Because I have worked with Mary in various capacities over these past 20 years, there is so much that I could say about her, but I have to be brief. With regard to marriage equality, though, Mary was, as I mentioned a moment ago, co-counsel with Beth in the Baker case in Vermont. She was lead counsel in the 2003 Goodrich case in Massachusetts, bringing marriage equality to this commonwealth and she was co-counsel on GLAD's 2008 marriage equality victory in Connecticut in the Kerrigan case. She played a key role in defeating all the anti-gay marriage amendment proposals in Massachusetts, and she is one of the leaders and public faces, if you will, on the No on One campaign in Maine, seeking to preserve marriage equality in that state as we speak. Indeed, just four hours ago, Mary was sitting in a studio in Maine in an hour-long debate call-in show about the ballot question on Maine Public Radio. Let me say just in summary, if you can recall the state of LGBT equality in the six New England states in 1990, or if not, and read up on it, and compare that state of affairs to today, we have made some tremendous strides forward. It has been the work of a lot of people, but I dare say no one has contributed more than Mary to that success. It's hard to believe how much you know, progress we've made in the, in the campaign for marriage in the, in the last decade, and, and Vermont got the ball moving. So I kind of tossed the first question here to Beth and to say, can you take us back to those days? Why did you decide to file Baker when you did, and what sort of work had you done before filing? So just picture me a little bit less gray, and we'll marry with the same. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, we started talking about this in really in, in as early as 1994, 1995, we were talking about doing this in Vermont. And one thing I want to say is I, I don't actually think Vermont got the ball rolling. I wouldn't want to take credit for that. I think the ball has been sort of ebbing and flowing for years. But in terms of the Freedom to Marry movement, I think Hawaii really got the ball rolling. I think it, 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 it opened up a possibility that I think a lot of us hadn't really uh, seen as a realistic possibility. And it certainly inspired us in Vermont to start talking about what we might do in our own state. Um, one of the things that I think we've done really well in this movement on a national sort of basis or a state-by-state -state basis is I think we've learned well from each other in each successive step along the way. So I think Massachusetts learned a lot of things from what we did and didn't do in Vermont. And likewise, I think we learned from, from Hawaii. And one of the things we learned very early on was courts don't operate in a vacuum and you can have the best legal arguments in the world and they may be vulnerable to political response. And so the first thing we did in Vermont when we decided we wanted to bring a marriage case was not to bring a marriage case. It was to form the Vermont Marriage Marriage Task Force and we spent a good year and a half really doing a range of groundwork laying uh, before, we, before we were ready to go into court and, and file a case. And some of that groundwork laying was, you know, the house parties around the state and making videos to tell our stories and all of that. Some of it was was legislative. Um, uh, in Vermont, we one of the first things we looked at when we were thinking about filing a case was what's the constitutional amendment process in Vermont. Um, 
it, it, it was quite easy in Hawaii, and that proved to be a, a, an unfortunate fact. And uh, it turned out in Vermont, it was pretty challenging. You had to, you had, you had, it, it was a, at least a four-year process, and it could only be initiated in certain years, and it required the votes of two-thirds of the Senate to even get off the ground. And so the very first thing we did was we focused on, once we sort of built some infrastructure, is focused on making sure that there was no chance that two-thirds of the Senate would vote for a constitutional amendment uh, when we won the case, which at the time we assumed we would. It turns out we were overly optimistic, but um, we actually were confident by the time we got through the process before we even filed the suit that two-thirds of the Senate would vote against a constitutional amendment. Um, and that was really, it, 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 the, to the extent of the question, why did you decide to file when you filed? I think that was one of the, sing that was probably the single biggest factor, is feeling like we had done the work we needed to do to make sure that we were ready to deal with the political response we might have. Um, all sorts of other factors. I mean, we, we, you know, <coughs> we, we certainly did our work in the executive branch and, and worked with the AG's office and other places, and I, 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 I am going to share this story that wouldn't have been interesting to you if Howard Dean hadn't gone on to be Howard Dean. Um, but since you know who he is because he became who he is, um, we actually sat down with him in 1997, uh, early in the year. And uh, that was Susan Murray and I sat down with him. And um, we basically explained to him that we were preparing to file a marriage case. And, and part of our groundwork laying was to make sure that we could try to work with the governor's office to at least, if he wasn't going to join us, to make sure he didn't say and do things that were going to make it worse. And so that was kind of the premise of our meeting. Um, but we let it be known what was coming down the pike. And, and you know, I'm not sure he was thrilled that that was going to be coming down the pike. And it was fascinating to watch the wheels turn as he was trying to think of a way to dodge this bullet. Mm -hmm. And so he, he kind of off the cuff came up with what we affectionately now call the harebrained scheme. <laughs> and the hair brush scheme is, you know, I got a much better idea than you going out and filing a lawsuit. He said, I'm sure you can find some town clerks around the state who will issue licenses to same sex couples. And in fact, we can probably put the fix in with the AG's office to make sure that if they call to ask, as long as they know who to call, they'll, like, you know, they'll, they'll get the green light. And so you can issue these licenses, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> and we'll do this for a few years. And we'll make sure that all of the state agencies that need to be in on it know to treat these people as married and to honor these marriages, but we're not going to tell anybody. <laughs> and then a few years down the road, maybe coincidentally after I'm not governor anymore, <laughs> somebody can actually sort of make a public issue and everybody can say, well, people have been marrying in Vermont, Vermont for years. It's not an issue. <laughs> So he sent us away from that meeting and asked us to contemplate that possibility. <laughs> and we decided in the car on the way home that that probably wasn't the best path. <laughs> but it was interesting, the creativity then. Like Gavin Newsom, yeah, exactly. Um, so in any event, that's the kind of route